So only about 20 to 30% of bike collisions are reported. So typically a report will be filed if um, a police or the ambulance has been called to the scene of, of a crash. So usually these are crashes between bicyclists and vehicles. But you know, a lot of things go unreported. So if it's a, if it doesn't, um, it's not so serious that the police need to be called, or if it doesn't involve a vehicle, um, it's not reported. And even a lot of times, it's hard for researchers to get their hands on the reports that are filed, and the details are usually unclear. So you might know a crash occurred, but you might not have much information on what the conditions of the crash were. So if you're trying to make streets safer, it's really helpful to know what's causing problems. There's also no centralized or near misreporting. So like in some you know, cities or states, it'll be like the Department of Transportation has the data. And then in some places, the, the police have the data. And in Canada, insurance companies will have the data. And so it's difficult that it's not centralized. And then near misreporting is super important for actually all safety research. So the idea that, um, you know, you think about all the times when you are out you know, moving from one place to another, the number of times you've been nearly hit, is a lot higher than the number of times you actually were hit, for instance. And you probably had a near miss that you would have liked to report. So now you can. You can go on to bikemaps.org. So this is a tool. There's a, an app as well as a website and you can report a crash anywhere in the world. And you can report a near miss and you can also report a hazard on this. And the way it works is that you'll drop a pin, you'll feel just like you're on Google Maps and you'll drop a pin and then we'll ask you some questions. So the cool thing is, is Bike Maps is used in 40 countries around the world, um, primarily in Canada and the US, but in other places it's popped up. Um, one of my favorite examples is in Reykjavik in Iceland. There's um, someone there who's been promoting Bike Maps. And so actually the, the tool has been translated into Icelandic. So the, I think it's in German. Spanish, French, English, and Icelandic. So there you go. When you zoom into the map, you can see the different colors here represent different things. So yellow is a near miss, red is a crash, green is a hazard. And if you click on um, the spot where you had a problem, we then ask you a bunch of questions. So there's only, I think, um, four questions that you're required to answer, the first four here. When was the incident? What type of incident was it with? What sort of object did you collide with? And then we ask you some questions about injury. But there's um, about 20 questions altogether. So we also ask questions about you know, how experienced a rider you are. Are you the other female? How old are you? Because all these things end up being, all these um, variables end up being really important predictors of injury and how safe cycling is. We also have a visualization page and I think this is um, really interesting in this class where we're talking about data visualization and mapping. So you should go check it out if you have a few minutes or you should make a few minutes to go and check it out and you can zoom around on the map and as you do all of these um, charts are going to move around interactively so you can select different things and um, so here we can see this is for Victoria Canada so I like to show this example because there's lots of data in Victoria Canada because that's where I was when we launched this but you can click on here we've got just the collisions and near misses turned on and then you can see how many are reported um, by day of the week so Wednesday tends to be a day where we get lots of collisions and near misses. And this actually is pretty consistent throughout the data. So midweek is when you see most of the reports and or most of the incidents occurring. People report them all different times, but they report that they're happy midweek. This isn't surprising just based on the trends in um, transportation. So at least pre-COVID, those midweek days were definitely busier days out on the road. And then you can also see the bottom um, chart there is uh, crashes and near misses by hour of the day. So the sort of morning rush and the afternoon rush, you tend to get more, which you would expect. 